Hey, uh, just taking a quick breather. Uh, this, this chevron is literally the only thing I've seen in like 110 miles. I almost ran out of gas on the way here. Uh, I pulled in with like my empty light blinking on my bike because bikes don't carry a whole lot of gasoline. Uh, I'm pretty literally in the middle of nowhere. There's like a whole bunch of windmills out in that direction and the same flat kind of hill kind of mountain thingies mesas is that what those are called plateaus uh, I... geography is never my strong suit uh anyway i guess uh i'm about three and a half hours outside of el paso right now which is where i'm gonna stay for the night um and hopefully get an earlier start tomorrow because tonight I'm gonna end up on the road at night and these roads aren't well lit you know so hopefully I don't hit a armadillo or something <laughs> um, I guess I'll see you guys from the hotel peace I was trying to record this last night and I was so exhausted that I just like I couldn't stop yawning and it, it was bad and <laughs> kind of incoherent so this is actually uh, morning of day two of my trip um, but I was gonna talk about how day one had gone um, so Houston to San Antonio is pretty boring, like we've all done that, and uh, I had a realization on my way to San Antonio, because I was thinking like, okay, I'm going to hit, you know, Houston to San Antonio, and then what comes next after San Antonio, and I realized that I had no idea, <laughs> because um, I've never been west of San Antonio, um, turns out there's nothing there. <laughs> No offense to people who live in those little towns and stuff, but there is nothing there. Um, a lot of times I almost ran out of gas on my way to El Paso, uh, which is where I am now. Um, or I'm a little bit west of El Paso, like I'm kind of right on the border, on the Texas border. Um, and uh, there's just like... Even to get to a gas station, most of the time, you have to go, like, a couple of miles off of the uh, freeway. And that was scary, because motorcycles really only go, at least my bike, will only go a little over 100 miles at a time without gas. And there were two or three occasions where I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough gas to make it to the next gas station. And it's not that there isn't one in between. It's just that, like, sometimes I would skip one, and then, because I had got gas, like, 20 miles before, and then realize, oh, crap, there might not be another gas station for 80 miles. <laughs> um, but it all worked out. Uh, I made it fine. Uh, I did get stuck in the rain twice. Uh, really bad outside of San Antonio. Um, on the other side of San Antonio. Just, like, out of nowhere, the sun disappeared. The whole sky was covered in, like, a giant black cloud. And the rain started falling hard, and it was fast, and it was, like, it was it was really windy with the wind. I mean, with the, with the rain. And, um, like, it was falling straight down, but it was also falling sideways. But it was falling sideways in, like, every single direction, not just, like, in one direction. Um... And that was kind of scary because I couldn't see at all. Like I was, my my face shield was covered in water, and the water was getting kicked up off the ground so forcefully by tires from the cars and trucks around me that I really could not see. I was relying on the brake lights of the car in front of me, basically. And after a while, even that, like the car wasn't that far ahead of me. It was maybe like uh, I don't know, like thirty or forty feet in front of me. And then it just 
disappeared behind this wall of rain because <laughs> it was so thick the rain that like you couldn't see through it anymore and I lost the lights and I was like yep this is how I die I'm gonna go ahead and have that for real motorcycle accident that everybody keeps telling me is coming because <laughs> I'm going you know I mean I slowed down a little bit I was going like 70 or something in that rain because part of me wanted to drive slow because I wanted to be safe but the other part of me wanted to drive fast because I wanted to get out of the rain <laughs> Um, I was worried about my phone because, like, my my whole body was just soaking wet. Um, and so I was, my phone was in my pocket, and I was worried that my phone was going to get damaged or something. But it was fine. At least so far, it seems fine. I'm still kind of sleepy. <sighs> We're in uh, Mountain Time in El Paso. And uh, I think, what time? It's like 6.30 in the morning right now. Uh, and I think I fell asleep around 1.30 or something. And the night before, I slept like nothing. I think I slept three hours the night before because a couple of us went out drinking and, well, you know how that goes. <laughs> I had planned to leave Houston um, yesterday morning at like 5 or 6 in the morning. But I don't think I even went to sleep until like 4.30 in the morning. So it wasn't it wasn't gonna happen. Me leaving at <laughs> me leaving at no five thirty, six thirty. Uh I left around twelve, eleven thirty or twelve. Um and I finally made it to El Paso at about uh I wanna say ten thirty PM. But that's mountain time, so it was really like eleven thirty if it had been central time. Uh so I was on the road for about like twelve hours. Uh it always takes me longer than Google Maps says. <laughs> Anybody who I've gone to visit on these long motorcycle trips knows I'm always later than I say I'll be. But it's not my fault. <laughs> Motorcycles have to stop for gas a lot more. And every time I stop for gas, I need to like stretch my legs and catch my breath and, you know, check my bags and drink some water. And, you know, so each one of these gas stops takes a good five or ten minutes. And if I have to stop seven times for gas on a 700 mile trip it's about seven times i gotta stop for gas then you know that's a half hour an hour that i'm adding to the trip right there uh but it all worked out i'm still pretty sleepy my eyes were like bludged i don't know if they are now they look okay it's a grainy camera uh this is still my laptop webcam. I tried using one of my better cameras, but I don't have a way to like see the feed, so I can't I can't just record a video on it without knowing like how the audio is going to sound and if I'm even in the frame. <laughs> uh, also, I did really really try with the GoPro and it had this weird hissing staticky sound in the background, so I don't know whatever. Um I was saying something else. What was I saying? I was talking about the trip and how long it took me to get here and how it was okay and how how long it took. I don't remember. Um, last night I saw Jisha. Uh, most people that would actually bother watching this already know who she is, but uh, in case you don't, she's some a really good friend that I went through the University of St. Thomas with. Um, she's actually here in El Paso now. She lives here. Uh, she's going to the, I'm going to get this wrong. It's the Texas Tech Paul L. Foster School of Medicine, I think. She goes to med school here in El Paso. And she has like the most baller apartment ever. <laughs> <laughs> her apartment puts mine to shame and it puts the room that I get at NYU uh, it, it makes that room look even more like a closet than it is um, the apartment it was dark, I got there at like 10.30 at night but uh, the apartment complex seemed really nice, it looked like the pictures because uh, I remember she and I were looking at pictures before she moved and it looked like a resort <laughs> um but the apartment is so nice. Like you walk in and you go upstairs and the carpet is really thick and the ceiling is really high and there's this really nice like balcony living room space and her room is awesome. And <laughs> I was definitely jealous, um, most definitely jealous. And I met her roommate very briefly, uh, but she seemed like a nice person too. Um, 
and just it made me a really good sandwich. I don't know if it's because the sandwich was delicious or because I hadn't eaten in like, I'm going to say 17 hours or something since before I went drinking the night before. And even then when we went out, I didn't eat very much because I wasn't hungry. Uh, but it was great seeing Chisha, catching up with her. Uh, she was one of my better friends at St. Thomas. Uh, and hearing about how well she's doing here now, like that made me feel good. I'm really happy that she's happy. It's great. Um, and uh, so let's see, what else? Um, the desert sucks. Because <laughs> um, most of the ride yesterday was desert. Most of the ride today is going to be desert. Uh, I'm going from El Paso to San Diego. And so I got to go through like Arizona and there's another state between here and there. <laughs> I've said this before, I'm really bad at geography. Um, but uh, that's all desert that I'm going to be riding through again today. But yesterday it was just oh so boring most of the time. I started falling asleep a few times. Just because, like, the wind noise and the vibration and lack of sleep and how boring the landscape is, it just puts you to sleep. <laughs> um, but, uh, there were a cool, there were a few cool scenic views. Um, every once in a while, you would get a glimpse of the mountains looking really pretty. The mountains that are over here near El Paso, you can see them from pretty far out. And, they look really pretty under the right light, you know, when the sun hits them just right, they look really nice. Um, and, uh, the, uh, <sighs> the freeway, it cuts through these, like, I, I think at one point they were, like, mesas or buttes or hills or something, I don't know what they're called. Um, but they kind of like cut I-10 through some of them, so sometimes you'd be driving and you see these, these big rock walls along the sides of the freeway, and that looks pretty cool. Um, but I, I left so late yesterday that I ended up on the road at night, and I was still probably a good 80 miles outside of El Paso, and uh, there's no lights out there. <laughs> so when the sun went down, it was just pitch black, and that was kind of terrifying. Um, there were headlights, you know, and trucks that had bigger bigger lights on them. But for the most part, I could only see, you know, so many feet in front of me, however far the headlights on my bike do. The headlight, because there's really only one headlight. As far as the headlight on my bike will show is as much as I could see. And uh, I was so used to the speed I had been going all day. I was still going like 100 miles an hour, even in like basically pitch black. And that's terrifying because you can't really see when... Because <sighs> mm -hmm. you can't see when, like, these sharp curves are going to come up or where. You can't see the end of a turn once you're in it, and those are important things on a motorcycle. <laughs> um, I was scared to run over something, too, like a piece of blown-up tire. Those are really dangerous to motorcycles, and I was really scared of running over something like that. But uh, I was okay. I didn't die. Uh, which is a plus. I am a fan of not dying. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I'm pretty tired. Uh, my back is a little sore. My abs are a little sore. My hands were kind of shaky after the ride yesterday. I haven't done a ride like that in about a month. Uh, about three weeks. When I went, to, I went to Colorado about three weeks ago. Um. So I don't know how today's going to go. We'll see if I feel better or worse today. I'll either have gotten readjusted or I'll just be sore and miserable. <laughs> but at least the California beach is on the other side, right? San Diego. I'm really excited to see San Diego. I'm really excited to see the Pacific Coast. Um, so let's see. Thoughts for the day yesterday. Um... There's a thing, I mean, I felt really good to be back on the road. I, I don't know what it is. I just, I feel, I certainly feel lonely when I'm alone, but I'm used to it in a way, you know, like I'm alone most of the time in my life. So being alone 
feels normal, I guess. Feels like routine. Um, and it's just like when you're on the bike, like, there's so much going on, you know. I, I wear headphones, which I know is dangerous, but I don't care. I wear headphones, so I usually have music or a podcast playing. And then there's, you know, you've got so many things to worry about. You're always worried about your, your speed because you don't want to get pulled over by a cop. And you got to worry about all the other cars, so your eyes are always darting around. Your head's on a swivel the whole time. Like, my head's always moving left and right. And even if my head's not moving, my eyes are moving left and right to the road or my left mirror or my right mirror. And your muscles are all tensed because your muscles are all making tiny movements the whole time to readjust the bike because the wind blows you around and uh, rocks and grooves in the ground, you know, they make your bike do things you didn't necessarily intend. So the whole time you're, you're kind of making small adjustments. And so all of your muscles are tensed up and, and it's just, you know, if you make one mistake, you're going to hurt yourself, which the accident I had back in May is proof of. I made one mistake and I hurt myself pretty bad. Um, and so while all that's going on, you just don't have time to worry about other things. At least I don't, you know, I can still like things that bother me about life right now, <laughs> they're still there in the back of my head. And I still think about certain things and certain people and stuff, but, but, um, it's like a lot more manageable when you're distracted like that, you know, and that feels good. It feels good to get away from the, I don't know what you call it, whatever I feel right now, where I have time to think about all the stuff that I'm unhappy about. <laughs> um, it feels better when I'm on the bike. Uh, I was in like, when I was in the desert and stuff, you know, I was thinking like, man, this sucks. I am suffering. I am unhappy. I am uncomfortable. And that kind of just, I don't know, my thought process moved from that to sacrifice. And I started thinking about what sacrificing really is. And then I started thinking about the people in my life that I have done things for that maybe aren't as grateful or appreciative or whatever for them as they, they could be or should be. And so I started wondering if, number one, like, how do you continue giving to people when they don't respond in any like fashion? You know, how do you keep giving and giving when people keep taking and taking? And number two, what do you do in that situation? So I think the second the second question is easier to answer for me because of my newfound, what's well, not newfound, but <laughs> because of my current philosophy on life, which is, you know, you treat everyone and everything with love. So it doesn't matter if a person is going to give back to you or not. You give because you care. And there are lots of reasons people might not seem appreciative or might not seem like they care about you when you're doing things for them. Uh, I don't think that any of the reasons I can come up with are good enough to make me stop being the person that I am, which is like, I take care of people. It's what I do. <laughs> um, it's why I chose the field I'm going into. Um, and, you know, sometimes you just need to be an example. Sometimes the people that don't understand how to reciprocate, sometimes they need they need someone to show them. They need someone to be like the model archetype or whatever for them to base themselves on. I know I needed that. Uh, last year, pretty much all the changes I made for the better were for and because of really specific examples in my life that I wanted to be like. People I wanted to be like are the reason I became a good person. Um, and the other thing, I mean, there might be reasons that you don't know about that people don't seem super happy or um, super giving in return. You know, so you should never just assume you know a situation. You know, you should just, I mean, 
keep showing love. Just show love all the time. And poisonous people don't like that. They they feel bad when they have that kind of person around them because they know they can't be like that too. And those people will just eventually remove themselves from your life. And the good people will stick around and eventually they'll become good too. They really will. So, I mean, that was kind of a really roundabout way of me thinking about some people in my life that I feel like don't appreciate the things that I've done for them. Or, I don't know. It's always tricky because, like, especially when you do things just because you care about the person, you know, like... You can't, you can't go up to someone and be like, hey, I did all this for you. You should be nice to me or whatever, <laughs> you know, because the natural response is, well, I didn't ask you to do that for me. And that's valid. That's totally valid. So you have to always make sure that you're tempering your own expectations in life. You know, you should never do something for somebody because you want something in return. You should do something for somebody because it's the right thing to do. Um, and I feel like that is why I treat people well, because I know it's the right thing to do, because I wish people would treat me that way. And I very strongly believe that you have to be the change you want to see. <laughs> um, but sometimes you have to remind yourself of that type of stuff, you know. Um, what else? What else? Is there anything else I want to say? I guess that's all I got for now. Um, I might shoot a video or two from a gas station on the way to San Diego. And I'm supposed to be staying with a girl who I went to middle school with in San Diego for a night. She's been gracious enough to offer me a couch to crash on. Um, and, well, I don't know, I don't want to be disrespectful to their hospitality, but hopefully I can go out and find a place to go dancing or something, you know, have a few drinks, relax. So I planned to last night, but I was just so tired when I got in, I did not make it out again. <laughs> um, anyway, that's all I got for now. Um. I guess I will update this as soon as I get around to it again uh, sometime today and talk about how the trip was between here and San Diego. Hopefully there will be some more cool stuff to see. I've been shooting video on the GoPro and stuff, you know, but a lot of it, I was going through it, a lot of it's kind of boring because <laughs> there isn't a lot of cool stuff to see. Um, so, yeah, you know, just... Like I'm going to keep saying, remember to treat everything and everyone that you come into contact with, with love. And uh, good things will come, hopefully. <laughs> if not, then my whole thing is screwed up, right? Um, Alright, peace out guys. Much love.